Hi, and welcome to Explorer Classroom. My name is Jennifer Bergen, and I am so happy to have you join us today. At National Geographic, we know the power of exploration, wonder, and storytelling can change the world. And this Explorer Classroom YouTube show connects students all over the world with our National Geographic Explorers for a short lesson and time for your questions. Today, our explorer is Melissa Marquez. Mel is a scientist, educator, podcaster, Latina, and a big fan of macaroni and cheese. Mel has a nickname, the mother of sharks. And that's because she loves to research these incredible animals and tell other people what she's learned about sharks in English and Spanish. Sometimes Mel writes her stories and she's got a book series coming out with Scholastic this year. Other times she shares her story on a podcast or television. So it's really clear that Mel loves to share about all that she's learning. And she hopes that after today's show, you are encouraged to tell your own wildlife stories and get excited to tell people about deep sea sharks. So Mel is joining us today from a ship called Ocean Explorer. And the ship has a mission. It explores all over the oceans and it brings back stories for the whole world. Wow. But before we get into today's lesson, I'd like to welcome our friends joining us from all over the world. We've got classes registered from the United States, Canada, and other countries too, such as TDSB Virtual, Guardian Angels, Rick Hansen Public School, Swansea Public School, Lakehead Virtual Elementary, Cotwright Hills Public School, Sugar Creek Elementary, Belmore School, Cascadia Montessori, Brookdale, Holy Cross, Valley Farm Public School, Woodstock Elementary, Bell Forest Community School, Rainburg Elementary, Clemens Mill Public School, Saints Peter and Paul, Orchard Park Public School, Allen B. Jr. and Vincent Massey. We are so thrilled to have you and even more friends watching on YouTube. And with that, let's get our Explorer Classroom started. It's time to turn it over to Mel to share all about deep sea sharks. Take it away, Mel. Hi everyone, my name is Melissa. I'm really excited to be here and talk to you guys a little bit about sharks. And my friend Gina is actually gonna help me showcase a little presentation that we have for you in regards to deep sea sharks. All right, perfect. Gina, if you can just go ahead and go to the next slide. So real quick, again, my name's Melissa, but you guys can call me Mel. I'm a Mexican Puerto Rican marine biologist who studies shark habitat use. So figuring out why sharks are where they are and also our relationship with sharks, how it's changed over the years and what that means for the future of sharks. I'm currently a student. I go to a university in Western Australia. So as you can kind of see, marine biology has brought me all over the world. And that picture that you see there, that's me actually doing some of my field research in some really remote parts of our planet, which I absolutely love. Gina, can we go to the next slide, please? Now, I love sharks and their relatives, which include the stingrays, the skates, and this little cutie right here that's called a chimera. And chimeras are actually what got me into studying deep sea oceans and deep sea sharks as well. But what's the deep sea like? Gina, can we go to the next slide, please? All right, so the deep sea ocean, it's dark, it's it's cold and because it's so far under the ocean waves, it's really, really pressurized. So you may be wondering who actually lives there. Yes. In fact, there's over 500 different species of sharks. A new book just came out. It's about 536 different species of sharks and about half of them 
are deep sea sharks and live in this kind of area. So they live in the deep or they travel down to the deep, which is really, really cool. And these sharks are pretty unique as well. If Gina can go to the next slide, I can show you one of them. So deep sea sharks don't look like your normal sharks, like a great white shark or a hammerhead or anything like that. They're a little bit more special. They've got these long defensive fin spines to make sure that nothing tries to eat them. They've got really large reflective eyes so they can see a bunch of light, as you can see for this cookie cutter shark here. And sometimes they glow in the dark. Gina, if you can go to the next slide, I can show you guys a shark that glows in the dark. This is the kite fin shark, and it's actually the largest animal, the largest vertebrate that we have on our planet that glows in the dark, which is really, really cool. But why does it do that? Good question. So this blue green kind of color that you see, it helps them communicate with other sharks, either as friends or to find someone to have some babies with. It could possibly help illuminate or shine kind of like a flashlight their food so they can find it and eat it. And sometimes it helps them blend in as well. Even though they're really, really far down deep, a little bit of sunlight trickles in and it gives off this bluish kind of glow. That's what these sharks kind of look like. They look like that bluish glow and no other shark would be like, oh, that's something that I want to eat. We also have some pretty other cool superpowers as well. Gina, if you go to the next slide, this is a frilled shark. As you can see, it has the big reflective eyes, some really funky looking teeth. Uh, and they also kind of look a little bit like an eel, which is really different from all other sharks. One really cool thing about deep sea sharks is that they don't have what we call a swim bladder that makes them go up and down in the water. Instead, they have really large oily livers, which they help use to kind of keep their buoyancy and keep them floating, which is really awesome. The life as a deep sea shark is pretty tough. If we wanna to go to the next slide, Gina. Food can be pretty rare down here in the deep sea ocean. What you see there are two six gill sharks kind of pushing each other to see if they can get what we call a whale fall. That essentially just means a whale died and it sunk to the bottom of the ocean and that's being eaten by other animals such as these really, really big sharks. We can go to the next slide, Gina. Now, like we said, life in the deep, it's dark and it's cold, doesn't really seem to bother the Greenland shark here, which is over 400 years old or can get to over 400 years old. But the next slide shows that deep sea sharks don't actually have that many babies either. So one thing that makes these sharks kind of live really, really long is that they take a while to be an adult essentially. So it takes them a long time to become an adult. They don't have that many babies and they have really long pregnancies as well. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite deep sea sharks, which is a goblin shark. And it's got a big long nose, big open mouth that can take in lots of food. If we wanna go to the next slide, Gina. Now studying deep sea sharks is really important because the more we know about them, the more we can better protect them. And the very things that make them successful deep sea predators are kind of making them vulnerable as well. We're catching a lot of these deep sea sharks and they're not being able to have enough babies in order to help, help those populations down below. So we wanna make sure we can study as much as we can from these animals so we can better protect them. Now Gina, if you wanna to go to the next slide, now this is that six scale shark that I was showing you earlier, which is really cool. And technology is helping us go down to these really, really deep depths in order to study the sharks better. So OceanX, BBC, and National Geographic, which are the companies that I'm working with right now, are capturing some amazing footage of deep sea sharks. And I've recently been able to help with that with me being on board the Ocean Explorer for the next four months. So, Gina, if you want to go to the next slide, I can tell everybody what I am doing. So, I'm helping some shark researchers out with their science. 
I'm also helping people all around the world, such as you guys, about deep sea sharks. And I want to talk a little bit about the six go shark because we're doing something really cool with them. If Gina, if you want to go to the next slide. So this is the blunt nose six gill shark. The really cool thing about the six gill sharks is most sharks have five gill slits, those little slits right there on the neck. Most of them have five. The six gills have six. And they have these beautiful, large green eyes to help them look at everything that's down there and it's all dark. They can get up to 18 feet long, which is really, really big. And they're spotted kind of all over the world, really, except Antarctica. But we don't know everything about these animals. Gina, if you want to go to the next slide. So the really cool thing that we're doing right now is to better study these animals. We're trying to tag them using a laser beams and a spear gun on that submarine that you see there on the screen, which is really exciting and hasn't been really done successfully. So this is going to let us be able to tag some sharks, see what their life is like, and learn a little bit more about them. Gina, if you want to go to the next slide. And that's the last slide. So can I see a show of hands? How many of you guys think that we're going to be able to actually get to tag one of the sharks? Yeah, I see quite a few hands. All right, well, we've got a few more tries that we're going to try to get a tagged shark but i want to know what kind of questions do you guys have and let's talk about sharks well i bet many of you out there are interested in more opportunities to explore after today's show so be sure to check out explore classrooms but also many more resources they're all free they're all amazing and you can find them at natgeoed.org and I hope that you'll come to more of our events. But as for Explorer Classroom, this week we are having our final show series. Series show, the final episode. So we're gonna take a summer break, just like many of you amazing learners out there. But don't worry, we're gonna come back when the United States goes back to school in the fall. So we're gonna have more episodes, more explorers, and we'll for sure take more of your questions. So in the meanwhile, keep your eyes open for our fall schedule and visit us at natgeoed.org backslash explore classroom. And you can also visit YouTube. You can review this show with Mel or many of our other episodes. Also, Mel has books coming out. You can visit Scholastic to check out her book series and she's really active on Twitter. So if you write her on Twitter and use the hashtag explore classroom, we can help you get your shark questions answered. Also, happy Pride Month. We encourage all of you to take some time this month to learn and celebrate LGBTQIA plus communities and also those in the communities who bring joy and excellence to our world, including some of our very own National Geographic Explorers. So friends, have an amazing day. Stay curious, keep exploring. And if you're on screen, Turn on your microphone and give Mel a great big thank you. Oh, turn on your microphones, my friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.